He's senior writer Zach Lowe. I am Malika Andrews. Kendrick Perkins is going to be with us momentarily. Six teams in action last night, but I think we should start in the Pacific Northwest. Maybe grab our Voodoo Donuts. Head up. Have you had Voodoo Donuts? Never. They're pretty good. Pips are better. Uh, let's head to Portland. The Nets were in town taking on the Portland Trailblazers. We're getting you to highlights of that one right now. Ben Simmons, this was his game, and we are going to show you. So, Blazers hosting the Nets. Let's go to the second quarter in this one, Zach. Ben Simmons, we're going to keep an eye on him in this first play. Because, look here. All's in the missed free throw. There then zips a nice pass to Kevin Durant on the other end for the finish. Ahead to the fourth quarter here. Nets down two. Simmons, another nice pass to Kevin Durant for the slam. And then a minute later here, the Nets, watch them. Getting out in transition. Durant drives. Finishes. Durant had 35 points and eight rebounds. So going ahead here to 240 left to play. The Blazers down by four. Lillard, ISO, spins into the lane, lays it in. Nice Tough. move from Tough. Lillard. Tough. 130 to play here. Blazers down five. Dame time. This is Dame time. Once again, he finishes with another layup. He had 25 points, 11 assists in this one. 10 seconds left. Blazers down three. Lillard. Finds don't foul him, don't foul oh. him, KD. You know, he would tie it at the line on this one. So Nets inbounding with 6.5 left. Durant gets the inbound pass. Looking, looking. Not quite good, but look who's there. Royce O'Neal gets one to go. Take another look at this one. Royce O'Neal, first career triple-double, first game with double-digit assists. Nets win 109-107. Take a listen to what the Nets had to say about Ben Simmons after the game. Incredible, incredible. I mean, just happy for him because, you know, he's been trying to get his form back, trying to figure his rhythm out. And tonight, I think he did a good job of just talking up, commanding the offense, commanding the team on the defensive side of the ball. Just, you know, he was he was incredible tonight. So you want to keep building on that. And, um you know, hopefully we uh, we get this next one. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. You know, I had people seem like I had like a, you know, a sprained ankle or something. You know, I had back surgery. And that's not easy to come back from. So um, <clears throat> I take it day by day. You know, I, I stay locked in. I stay focused and, and continue to build, you know, on myself, uh, my body and my game. Okay, so looking at Ben Simmons' stat line last night, he had a season-high 15 points, 13 rebounds in last night's win over the Blazers, his first double-double of the season. Let's dive in a little bit more to what exactly we saw from Ben Simmons. We have a little bit of tape to show our viewers here, Zach. Let's yeah, and I, I remember day one of the season on this show after his first bad game, I, sat, I stood right there and said, look, I know it was bad. We got to be patient. He's recovering from back surgery, hasn't played in a million years. And now we go to the tape last night, he started doing some Ben Simmons things. Here we go here, look, rebound, run, let's go. And here he goes, hard push. This is the Draymond Green. Now, he's got an alley there. I'd like to see him attack that. He had space to attack, but if you're going to get it out to a good three-point shooter, fine. Defensively, here he is on the back line where he has struggled this year. Okay, he's putting up a fight against a legit NBA center. Deflection out of bounds, good. Bring me the fight, Ben Simmons. I like to see it. Pumping this is what they need to see every play. game. Having a little swagger. And this is where he was elite defensively in Philly, guarding ball handlers. And Damian Lillard is a fire at all times, a five-alarm fire. Look, there's some airspace there. It's not perfect. Dame, any airspace with Dame is a risk when he recovers. They switch. Tough shot. This is not, like, remarkable stuff. But this is what the Nets need from Ben Simmons every single night, and it's a step in the right direction, but like Katie called it incredible. It is incredible to see as a human being, you're rooting for Ben Simmons, but this has to be every night. This is what he used to do every night for the Nets to get anywhere close to where they thought they could get. A step in the right direction for Ben Simmons, a step in the right direction for the Nets defense, because looking at the numbers, they held the Trailblazers to 29% shooting in the second half. They let them have 30, 61 points rather in the first half, but they started to get their wheels turning a little bit. I want to bring Kendrick Perkins into this conversation. Perk, what was your biggest takeaway looking at the Nets win over the Blazers last night? Malika, did Zach say patience? Did he say patience when it came down to Ben Simmons? Look, Zach, this is not no hospital, okay? This is the NBA, and we've been patient enough I with Ben patience. Simmons when it's come down <laughs> to him needing to perform at an all-star level. But look, I'm not going to be critical of the Nets right now. I'm actually going to be positive, and I'm going to say this, okay? Kevin Durant basically called out his role players by saying, look who, am I, look who I'm on the floor with after their last loss against the Sacramento Kings. 
Royce O'Neal responded in great fashion last night with his first career triple-double, along with Ben Simmons' play. I mean, all across the board, they were feisty, they got down and dirty, and matter of fact, the role players actually bailed Kevin Durant out in the clutch when it mattered the most. So I will say that was a positive sign on how his teammates responded to him and his criticism of them. I will say that. But am I putting any stock into that one win? Am I about to sit up and say, oh, that's a good sign. They're going to turn the corner. No, I'm not going to do that. They're still the Brooklyn Nets. They're still surrounded by drama. And they're still going to suck at the end of the day when it comes down to making any title type of title run. Oh, strong words there, Zach. Yeah, they can't even see the corner from where they are. They got to get on an airplane to get to the corner and then turn the corner. It's a long way from the corner. But two, <laughs> two other notes. One Ben Simmons thing we should talk about. Three or four from the line when they went hack a Ben on him. I've been waiting for teams to go hack a Ben. You know it's going to happen. And he responded last night. That's big. And I want to shout out Utah Wantanabe. Mm. Forgotten player has been cast around the league. He has been mm. sensational for the Nets. Five threes last night. He's shooting well from three. That was a weak spot in his game. This is a wonderful success story for a guy who's bounced around the fringes, found a home in Toronto, but it didn't last. And maybe, maybe he's found a lasting home in Brooklyn, and they need everybody they can get to get this season back on track. Well, and when we were chatting with Sarah Kustak, she was in studio with us, Nets on Yes Analyst earlier this week. She talked about how much Kevin Durant in particular has been impressed with Utah Watanabe and what he's been able to do for this team. All right, let's put the Nets on the back burner for just a moment, bring it back here to Los Angeles where Kawhi Leonard made his return last night against the Pistons. Here's how it all went down. Getting to the highlight in Crypto.com Arena. You can see him, the man, the myth, Kawhi Leonard has returned in this one. Kawhi Leonard, first game since October 23rd. Hit the turnaround jumper there. You can see. One more time, Zach. What's up, Killian Hayes? Have some of that. Fourth quarter. Clippers up four here. Paul George gets a steal. And then throws it down at the other end. Beautiful play by Paul George. And then later in the fourth, the Clippers up six at this point. Kawhi in transition weaving through the lane. Nice touch, gets the layup to go. The Clippers win this one 96-91. Let's take a listen to Kawhi Leonard after the game. It's going to be a long journey. Uh, ACL recovery isn't just one year. Everybody thinks that, but it's a two-year process. So um, I know that, and uh, I'm going to keep going and um, going through the process. Welcoming in our Clippers reporter, Ohm Young Masuk. So that's what Kawhi said about his ACL injury. It kept him out all of last year. But, but what did Kawhi say specifically about what kept him out for 12 games straight? Well, Malika, he was cryptic as usual. When he was asked what exactly was he experiencing during those 12 games off, he said, I'm not going to go into detail about it. I'm not a doctor, and neither is anyone in this room. As much as my Asian parents wish I was a doctor, I'm not a doctor. What I do know, or at least I've been told, is that Kawhi definitely felt something in his knee at the beginning of the season, um, enough to give them pause to try to figure out, let's strengthen this, let's make sure that this does not linger on into the season, hopefully that they can have him healthy for the postseason. So now they start all over again, building his minutes back up. He played about 24 minutes last night. He started as well. He came up. Uh, about like I think about six or seven minute stretches in each stint. So uh, it's going to now the other thing, too, is they have to wait and see how he's going to feel daily. We got to see how his body reacts today and tomorrow before the game and hope that there is no sort of flare up or anything like that. I, I want to dive a little bit more, though, into the comments that Kawhi Leonard made, Zach, because it, it was a little bit interesting to hear him say, well, I'm not a doctor, so I I'm not really going to explain any of what was going on with him for the last several weeks when he knows and the Clippers know that that's all anybody is interested in. How are you? What was going on? And is this going to recur? How concerning mm -hmm. was that for you? I wish someone in the room had stood up and said, I'm a doctor and started answering the questions. But look, I thought it, it's, it's concerning that we don't get an explanation. You know with Kawhi and the Clippers, you're not going to get an explanation. That's just par for the course. I thought last night he looked rusty, rustier than I expected, a little bit worse, frankly, than he looked in the first two games he had played this season, and a little tentative. I expected him to come out and say, okay, I'm back, give me the ball in my spots. He was deferential to other teammates, and maybe that's fine. Like he said, it's his first game back in a while. Maybe it's a two-year process. And at the end of the game, 
we saw that transition layup. He kind of started seizing the game a little bit. So maybe it's just going to take time. But I actually, I, last night fell a little short of my expectations and hopes for him. But look, this is about the next 15 or 20 games. We're at the quarter mark of the season. The Clippers have to, at some point, establish an identity.